Good morning, friends. Welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny, and I say good morning because the sun is coming up. It is a gorgeous day here at Creekside Nursery. It is April 1st, so didn't even think about April Fool's Day. Hopefully, you don't have any jokes planned on you today. Today, what I'm going to share with you is just a nursery tour, and there are no jokes here. Um, we are at the nursery, obviously. Now that it is April, we are going to be open on Thursdays through Saturdays, 9 to 4. So if you are local or you're planning on coming to visit Creekside Nursery, you can plan on visiting us Thursday through Saturdays. Those are the only days that we are open. We have limited hours. So uh, yeah, plan accordingly and it's going to be a great day. So we're going to be here at the barn. I just want to kind of go through some of the things that here at the nursery we are offering. Um, of course, if you're not local, I hope that you can use this as some inspiration that you get out to your local garden center and see what they have available. So for you folks coming here to the nursery, um, of course, we have got tons of the proven winners, both the water soluble and the slow release food. This is what I use exclusively on my flowering annuals and it makes a massive difference because remember, food equals flowers. So we have those here. We also have the gardener's idea book free here um, for you folks. So we've got plenty of them. So when you stop by and you check out, make sure you grab a free book from Proven Winners. Of course, all the Espoma products are here. This is a great time now that we spring is starting to really spring here in North Carolina. My hostas are coming up. All my perennials are starting to poke their little heads up. Now is the perfect time to go ahead and fertilize those, your shrubs and your perennials, those kinds of things. I love using the Espoma. Plant tone is great. When in doubt, use plant tone. If you wanna get more specific, of course you can. The holly tone is great. This is what I will use, obviously, on my hollies, my evergreens, camellias, azaleas, rhododendrons, um, this is what you're going to use for that because it's more of an acid loving, which is what those plants love. So we have that. Of course, plenty of biotone. So when you're planting your trees and shrubs, perennials, all of that is great. Aquapots. You know we have these great aquapots. So they are starting to run out. Um, they are selling like hotcakes. So if you are planning on getting an aquapot, you need to get your little hiney out here and get some because once they're gone, they're could be gone. It's, you know, it's hard for us to get them because they get shipped straight from Vietnam. Um, I was talking to Michael, I don't know, two weeks ago, and he said, Jenny, I've got tons of aquapots, but they're stuck in Vietnam because still with COVID and transportation and all that, it's just been a nightmare for him. So if you're interested in an aquapot, you need to come as soon as possible because I can't guarantee that they're going to be here. I have no idea. Great product, black gold. This is their natural organic um, outdoor planting mix. This is a great combination of um, compost. It has soil conditioner in it. This is a great thing to amend your soil. If you want to like top dress, it is OMRI listed, so it is certified organic. It's also great, like you can plant straight in it. So if you're doing like vegetables and herbs, this is a great option for you to use. For that, we do have this bag. These bags of sun grow are what we call soil conditioner or pine bark fines. Simply, it is just really finely ground pine bark that has been aged. So aged makes a big difference because that means it's not gonna continue, it doesn't have to go through the breakdown process in your soil. This is great for clay soil. So if you're looking, if you have really compacted soil and you need to loosen it, get some aeration in here, this is a great, great product to use. You can take your native soil, mix this into like the whole bed, the whole planting area, and you know, with continued use, it helps a ton. All right, so let's move on. Oh, forgot, sorry. I know right here, it may look like, and I know we're fighting the sun, so I'm just gonna apologize for that. Um, can't help. <laughs> the good Lord makes the sun rise every morning. We can't, can't stop that. Um, Land and sea. Now you may look at that and go, oh my gosh, she's about to, you know, run out. No, we've got pallets more. This, so we've got plenty. The Espoma land and sea compost. And then of course, again, we, ha and we have pallets of this. The Proven Winners potting soil. This is what I use exclusively in all of my pots and hanging baskets, containers, window boxes. It is just a fantastic product. And it does have some slow release fertilizer in there. Because before we know it, hopefully, 
we'll be able to start putting out those beautiful containers, although not this weekend because it's going to be like 28. So anyway, all right, let's go over here. Um, Christine is working this morning before we get open. We did go ahead and pull some more annuals from the production greenhouse and we brought stuff down. Um, so we're going to kind of show you um, some of the things that we have that we're bringing down. She's almost gotten them all in there um, because it is going to be tonight. So tonight's Thursday. Tonight's going to be like 28. Tomorrow is going to be like 27. So even though you can buy this stuff, you need to be aware that we're having a hard freeze for the next two nights. So this is not when you want to go ahead and put it in the ground. Um, you just need to be aware of that because I don't want you to lose your plants and have to buy them again. Proven winners. We have, um, if you're looking for some great tomatoes, we've got all three of their tomatoes. This is Garden Treasure. Garden Treasure is a little bit of a hybrid of a brandy wine tomato. So this is going to be a nice, big, fat, juicy, really great tasting tomato. It has more disease resistant than brandy wine. Remember, brandy wine is an heirloom tomato. So this has a little bit more disease resistant and it produces more fruit, but that is just a beautiful plant, gorgeous plant. Then we have garden, so Christine can take treasure. And then we also have, we have all three of them. She's already grabbed the other one. This is good hearted. So good hearted is really fun because this would be somewhat like um, aroma tomato nice and meaty it's not i wouldn't say overly juicy this is great for salads and different things it is called good hearted because if you cut it in half then it forms that has a heart shape so these are fantastic this could, you could put this in a container a large container put it on the patio um, this would do really well of course you can put it straight in the ground also treasure needs to go in the ground unless you just have like a massive container because um, if you're familiar with those brandy wines, you know, they just get massive. So we're going to come on in here. Um, so this is where we're keeping all of the plants that need some heat and some warmth that are not ready to be outside yet. Um, minus the petunias. So come on in here for a minute. I see something blooming that I'm very excited about. Look at this beauty. So this is, I don't want to say it's my favorite because I have a lot of favorites, but this is a fantastic plant. Rockin' Blue Suede Shoes Salvia. Because I want to show you, I'm going to turn. Look at that bloom. Look at how pretty a nice crystal blue um, flower. The hummingbirds go nuts over these salvias. So any of the Rockin' series, they do great. Of course, this is an annual and it likes the full sun. It gets nice and big. You can get 30 to 40 inches tall. I used this in the wheelbarrow last year, that planter. Um, hummingbirds went nuts over it. And I will say, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I know my friend Norman in Georgia, he already has his hummingbirds. And then yesterday, my mama texted Emily and said, I just saw my first hummingbird. So they are coming back to North Carolina. So once this cold weather gets passed, get your plants out there so that you can um, show some love to your sweet hummingbirds. Look at these great foliage plants. I love these. These are just going to be so fun. This is icicles, a beautiful um, silver foliage plant, nice, um, really fine marrow leaves. It's just going to be a gorgeous plant. It's about eight to 16 inches tall, just beautiful. So there's this. Then we have one that's really fun. This is going to be a little bit more of a trailing upright kind of habit. This is white licorice. Look at that. So beautiful. It's just gorgeous. It's almost has, if you're familiar with lamb's ear, it's like a very miniature little lamb's ear. And there's your tag for that. Um, just a beautiful plant. I don't know how I'm going to use it, but I'm going to use it somewhere, somehow. All of these because they're just so fun. I've never done them before. I've never grown them before, um, and I want to use them. Just looking down here, though, um, like Christine's got the tomatoes, the begonias in here. Oh, let's come over here because I want to show you the fuchsia salvia. Um, Terenia, look at this. 
So this is Catalina Midnight Blue Terenia. If you're not familiar with Terenia, it's a great plant. It is a really extremely low maintenance, high performing. I mean, I literally put this in the ground and then I'll fertilize it with my liquid fertilizer, you know, about every three waterings. It is a fantastic plant. Sun to shade, it comes in the blue, it has, we have a pink, um, lots of great colors. It has more of a trailing habit to it. So it's doing great. Um, put it in the ground, in a container, all sorts of great things. Basil is growing quite nicely. Look at this, love it. And of course, you just take the little slightest little bit of a rub. Oh, it smells like summertime. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So the amazing basil is doing quite well. Coffee cups, she's coming along quite nicely. Um, remember, local sales only, folks, all right? If we were somehow, some way able to get more coffee cups, then we will put them online. Um, I'm not saying it's gonna happen. Good chance. It's a good chance. So there is a good chance we can get some. Those will go straight online. But I've learned in this business, I'm not gonna tell you that I'm gonna put something online or have it available until I actually have the plant in my hand because we've had too many. <laughs> I would hate to say, oh yes, I'm gonna have it, and then I disappoint you. That would just not be fun at all. Then look at this. This is the most fun grass. It is an annual. This is fiber optic. It is a nice petite grass, so it's not gonna get much taller than what it is right now. It will continue just to get really full, but you can see why it's called fiber optic. It has those great little white I don't know, tufts on the end that make it look like a fiber optic cable. So really cool. I am going to be using this in the patio area. I already have plans for it. I've been, there's a combination with proven winners that they've had um, for quite a while. And I have longingly looked at that combination and now I have the perfect spot to do it. Um, but, so why we came over here was to show you Rock and Fuchsia. So blue suede shoes and rock and fuchsia might be my two favorite rock and salvias. Can you see why? I mean, just positively fantastic. Again, the hummingbirds go nuts over this. All the pollinators go nuts over this because of the flower shape. They are able to get in there and get the nectar from the plant. Um, just a beautiful, bright, hot pink color against that dark green foliage. I mean, it's just a stunning combination. Of course, with all the rockin' series of their salvias, they branch, they get nice and big. Um, if for some reason, you know, one of these, the flowers gets snapped off, it's okay because it just makes a bushier plant. Also, notice that some of the flowers just fell off, but look right here. Even though it's lost the flowers, it still has some nice interest to it. Um, I think it's called the calyx but it's what holds the bloom. So it still has some pink hues to it. So that is a really great, fantastic plant. Love this. Um, the double in patience. Here is apple blossom. Oh goodness. We've got apple blossom and wisteria both blooming. So of course these double in patience are for the shade. There's a bunch of different colors. Wisteria is the purple. Apple blossom is the pink but those are just beautiful, beautiful blooms that just perform all season long in the shade, both in the ground, containers, hanging basket, window boxes, very, very versatile. They just don't like to be dry. So wherever you're gonna put your impatience, um, make sure that they have a good consistent source of water because they will do really well that way. Look, these are finally taken off. This is the Macho Morado. Um, it's the Mexican petunia. Look at that. This is the fun one. This is for us Southerners who um, have those hot, humid nights. They do really, really well. Um, the tags on top of the, um, let's see if I can get the tag off so you can, there we go. It's fantastic. And it's not going to be highly invasive. So the old Mexican petunias would spread like crazy. These do not. 
So like I said, for us who have those hot, humid nights, this will do amazingly well. In fact, that's what it prefers. So if you have cool nights, you may not find you get as many blooms. Still waiting on caladiums. I'm telling you, they just kind of, they sit, they sit, they sit. They have to have it nice and hot. And then all of a sudden, once they start, they just go whoosh. Um, so let's walk over maybe to, let's see what time it is. Because we're opening in like seven minutes. So we got to wrap this video up. But I do want to show you, let's go over to the pines and um, show you some things out there. We got a sneaky boy over there. We do have the petunias out. So petunias and the caliber coas are out. Tonight we will um, put all of this underneath the tables and cover it with the landscape fabric. Um, they can handle cold temperatures, but we would lose all of our blooms and we don't want to do that. So we're going to protect them. So we've got some work to do tonight. Vermillionaire will probably what go back in the greenhouse. It just cannot handle. So if you've got Vermillionaire out, you need to take care of that. Um, another hummingbird magnet. Look at my tulips. <laughs> They've started. So if you remember in this container, I have, these are the giant alliums. And then there's actually three different kinds of tulips in here. Don't ask me what the names are. I don't remember. We'll link the video. Obviously, the dark purple is the earlier bloomer. Then there's a light lavender. And then there is a white. I know the white is kind of a late bloomer. But these are developing quite nicely. And I'm super excited about them. They're doing great. Um, also, for you local people, we have... Um, we had potted up some bulbs and so these are available for sale like this guy you can tell that they were an early bloomer and they're almost done you could take this and go ahead and plant these in the ground so that that way because these are perin this particular one is a perennial so it will do well here so you could go ahead and plant the bulbs in the ground and you have it for years to come um, but they are starting to come the fire pit look at the reds so remember I told you, um, not the fire pit, but the grill, and I was joking about how I, I did the red, yellow, and the orange. Well, they are all this little tip shape, you know, like flames in the grill. So fun. So coming on across, I just want to show you real quickly um, what's going on as far as hostas are starting to wake up. The um, ferns are waking up. All of these perennials out in this area, they overwintered out here. So they are extremely cold hardy. So for us in our 7B climate, it is not an issue to leave ferns and hostas in containers outside during the winter because they are very, very cold hardy. We're never gonna get too cold for them. But you can see we're starting to wake up here. Um, these hostas are in two gallons. So that once they actually come up and they're just gonna be massive and full. So we'll really have to clean these tables out because just, I mean, like, look at this. Look at this one. This one is um, Elegons and it, she's not even still, you know, finished opening yet. So here we have Elegons is a gorgeous blue one. Um, just so many fantastic things. Japanese painted ferns or is this Godzilla? Now, yeah, this is just a great painted fern. Love this, great perennial. It's fantastic. Of course, it has that nice silvery foliage to it and it will um, just pair beautifully with all sorts of things. But anyway, as I said, we're gonna, have, we're gonna be opening up here in five minutes. So we probably need to wrap it up for the day. Um, I hope you have gotten some inspiration. If you're local and planning on coming by, just know we have got plenty of plants in, in stock. Don't worry, I know the website um, is saying that it's kind of sold out. Online inventory, garden inventory, completely different. We have got plenty of plants for you, so come see us. Just be mindful of the weather. If you can't take care of your plants right now, don't buy them, because I'd hate for you to, they, they will get zapped. If you put these things out at 28 degrees at the annuals, um, you could easily lose them. So just be aware, you know, knowledge is power and I don't want you to lose things. Um, we will be this afternoon, go ahead and um, covering things before we go. I know I said, see I do this all the time. Come with me real quick. Jerry's like, Jenny! I have to show them this. Look at this. Okay, 
This is a pot that I did, I put together about this time last year. There are two Eucharas in here. That is great expectations, but the show piece, that just the show stopper, is this Dicentra. Dicentra is a bleeding heart. This is gold heart. Um, it has that beautiful lime green foliage. When I planted it in this pot last year, it was a one gallon size, but look how massive it is. Look at all of the blooms on this, just gorgeous. Now I show you this because I just want you to see that you can have a beautiful pot in the shade that you can leave out year round. Like I did not do anything to this during the winter. It just sat right there. Um, I know you're going to ask if we if we have it. We we have gold heart. Mm -hmm. We have enough. We'll bring it down here. Okay, so Jerry says we have gold heart. Um, just know that some some of these things are hard to get because of just yeah. inventory. It's just really hard. So I just want you to see that. And again, whether you're planting this plant or another plant, dream and think of what is going to be in the future because they will be fantastic. Okay, guys, we're really going to sign off now. As always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye, friends.